<coughs> Hello everyone, welcome to my Let's Play of Splinter Cell. And this is in fact the second attempt that I make of doing this. Because last time that I recorded this game, I had, well, had, I had been recording for two hours, and then I realized I was recording without sound. Bollocks. <laughs> so, just because I got extra paranoid about this, I'm going to stop the recording for a bit check uh, to see whether or not I'm actually recording the sound this time um, before moving onwards. So, uh, be right back. Uh, Alright, there we go. Uh, everything seems to be okay. So, uh, yeah, let's just uh, redo what I did last time. I actually played through the first two levels. Uh, so yeah, I was feeling excellent about myself. But I suppose I could use the additional training of that one. <laughs> failed attempt at a recording session because I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to play the super stealthy first guy that I come around sees me, I'm like, oh what the fuck <laughs> this has never happened to me before never on the first, dude it's like the easiest one ever but, oh uh, so yeah, solo yeah, not gonna continue with this so, uh, profile management I suppose gonna get rid of the old account <clears throat> yeah, delete it. And remake it. Promptly remade. Alright. Create. Select. There we go. So let's go through all of this again. Extras. Um, you can find a the soundtrack there. Uh, which is really nice. The, the, the person that they hired to do the sound um, is an actual musician. You know, very famous guy. The soundtracks, the soundtracks of this game has been has been used in uh, many different situations. Uh, let's see whether or not the settings are right now. Um, I suppose I'll just play at 1080p. I got a bigger screen uh, yesterday, uh, so I can now I I, sh I should now be able to play in uh, 1440p uh, at a 16 by 9 resolution, but. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, there's no way that I'm gonna record that stuff, just no. <laughs> 1080p, it, it will have to be for a long while. I think that's more than anyone watches it. Lately, I have been uh, watching videos of 1080p whenever I had the possibility. Uh, you know, I have, I have several screens, so I can just, if I want, uh, I can easily just put one of them, put the video on one of them in full screen and still be able to do my work, so... I, I tend to watch videos in full screen nowadays. Uh, anyway, this is a neat feature, um, native languages. They actually implemented, uh, and it's wonderful that you have the choice, to choo uh, the choice about this. Um, you can either choose to let people speak English, so it will be unchecked or checked, and then they will speak their native language according to what makes sense at uh, your current location, geographical location in the game. Uh, this, uh, it's very cool to play with native languages when you play through it for the second time, just to have that extra little bit of immersion, and it's just fun. But I recommend not doing it for your first playthrough, I'm not gonna do it now as well, because you, if you don't speak the languages, you miss out on quite a lot of uh, funny dialogue between the characters running around. Uh, it's just, yeah. Obviously, if you do speak, uh, what is it all? Spanish, Korean, uh, what other languages might there be? Chinese, Japanese. Yeah, if you if you do speak all of those languages, then please go ahead. It will be fucking awesome. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. You have some training videos if you like. Want Fisher to explain some stuff. That was also fairly well done. I just like a lot about this game. A lot about it has been executed well and uh, not not look like the tutorials, the training videos, they're actually like sort of training videos. Fisher himself is explaining what you have to do to be a good spin. So it, 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 it is, yeah, it is just well executed in my opinion. Anyway, we're gonna be playing a new game and I'm gonna be playing at the expert level. Uh, it's not that, you know, I don't know. Expert is not that difficult, really. Uh, I'm kind of used to the game, so maybe that's that's why I think it's not that difficult. But uh, it will make it a lot more interesting, at least. If the AI is just too stupid, it, I don't know. I, I, it's, I feel that I prefer to have a little bit more of a challenge. 
uh, and go about it slower. Uh, that just feels more natural in this with this game, in this environment. Right, let's go. like a Chinese Jiangwei class cruiser with a North Korean destroyer escort. Events in the Yellow Sea took a turn for the worse today when North Korean and Chinese forces blockaded and boarded a Japanese cargo ship. The North Korean government released no official statement, and their ambassador remained out of contact. While at the UN, Chinese Ambassador Long Dan urged the US and her longtime Japanese allies to remain calm, calling the blockades a legitimate response to what the rest of Asia views as a possible remilitarization of Japan. This blockade is an act of war. The NSC is working on a formal response, and they've ordered the USS Walsh to close at flank speed. The Walsh is the most advanced spy ship in history. My best man will be on board. What do you know? Chinese and North Korean ships working together again. It's what we expected. That's a 056 prototype, Chinese. Exactly. How are your sea legs? I haven't lost them. Good. Because the 056 prototype isn't the only new fish in the pond. Admiral Toshiro Otomo, head of Japan's newly formed Information Self-Defense Force, had this to say. This is another distressing attempt by China and North Korea to further depress our faltering economy. The ISDF and Japan appeal to our allies for the military support promised us under the post-war constitution of 1946. The fact remains that in the eyes of many in Asia, the ISDF itself is a violation of the post-war constitution prohibiting Japan from maintaining a military force capable of striking beyond its borders. In Asia, the memories of Imperial Japan are still fresh. Morganhold has been kidnapped by a Peruvian separatist group known as the People's Voice. Morganhold's knowledge of dangerous computer algorithms must not fall into the hands of the People's Voice or their leader, Hugo Lacerda. Fisher, an American engineer named Bruce Morganhold has been kidnapped by a Peruvian separatist group called the People's Voice. Their suspected leader, Hugo Lacerda. As a hardcore revolutionary, preaching information warfare is the only realistic means to achieve revolution in modern society. We need you to get in there and recover or destroy any information Morgan Holt may have been forced to divulge, and if possible, rescue him. As for Lacerda, he's just been bumped onto our target of opportunity list. So if you have a shot, take it. Hostage rescue isn't normally our bag, but Morgan Holt was part of Project Watson the UN committee that studied Philip Mass's handiwork after Georgia. 
Some people are worried that this kidnapping is just a cover-up, and that Morgan Holt is being interrogated for classified information about the mass colonels. Fact is that some of the tricks Mass came up with could be used to do a lot of damage. We need to contain that information at all costs. The target area is a lighthouse attached to an abandoned Spanish colonial era fortification and some nearby structures. We don't have an exact location on Morganhold, so you'll have to find him yourself. Insertion will be at night by Zodiac onto the beach beneath the fort. Thermal imaging shows that there are some old natural and semi-natural caves under the fort. So you may be able to use those for infiltration. All right, Fisher. The helicopter will drop you a few kilometers offshore in the Zodiac. You'll have one of my Zodiacs and logistical support in and out of the target area. Extraction will be by helicopter from the top of the lighthouse. This place international holds the contract with Wright Pritchard Technologies to protect their VIPs in potentially hostile situations. We did a thorough threat evaluation for their project in Peru and we accepted the VIP detail on Morgan Hall. The guys who came after him knew what they were doing. This was not a tourist grab. I lost three good men in the snatch, and I'm currently preparing a rescue plan for approval from Morgan Holt's family and Wright Pritchard. This is going to cost this place a lot of money. Uh, in case you're wondering, Doug the Shetland is a uh, character from the second game, Dor uh, Pandora Tomorrow, one that I will not be doing anytime soon at least. Um, he and Shepard have some history, uh, they go way back and you know they work with friends. Uh, it's sort of important <laughs> for the rest of the story that you sort of know who the guy is. Um, I don't know, they'll probably explain later on. Uh, anything else? No, I don't think so. So what is my plan uh, for this let's play on my play style? Uh, I'm gonna try to play uh, stealthily and fast. Um, and I'm also going to try to leave as many enemies alive and running about as possible, at least in the first half of the game, but it is more than possible to do. Uh, you're not really forced in many situations to take someone out. If, if, I, if I am, then I will, and I will try to do so stealthily, not killing, unless it's like a fun way to kill someone that will probably arise near the end of the first level already um, people who have played this game will know what I'm talking about uh, anyway this is also fun you get three different um, loadouts uh, stealth assault and something in between I will choose stealth most of the times um, just because you get more sticky shockers and uh, f12 rounds usually and they're useful so yeah Besides, I don't, do not really need all the bullets that they offer me in the other ones, so just go with stealth. 